Welcome everybody to part one of Django Design Patterns. And today we are going to take a look at how we can clean up our URLs files. As you can see, I already have a project which you can go grab on my GitHub repo, which I created for this purpose, if you want to follow along. But anyways, I have a little setup right here. As you can see, the path which is empty leads to view.booklist, which is included in a main application right here. And then I already have created four more paths. One leads to details, the other leads to add, delete, and edit. The first thing we want to understand is how Django actually processes URLs. And what Django does is it goes into your main URL config file and looks under URL patterns, which is this variable right here. And then it goes through all of the paths in order and sees if the current path which the user requested matches any of the paths we specified. And if it does, it executes the appropriate function. So in this case, if we were to hit an empty path, it would lead to this view store book list, of course. Now, the problem we have with this approach is that we have way too many paths inside of this main URL config file. And just imagine if we had like five more apps, then this would grow into a hundred lines and it would be just unmanageable. So what we can do to resolve this issue is extract all of the paths which don't really belong here into their appropriate application. In this case, we have these five paths which interact with some kind of book model which I have right here. And therefore, we should exclude them into their own separate app. So let's go ahead and just copy all of this for now using control C and then go into your main or inside of this main app, create a new file and let's name it urls.py. And now paste all of it in here and we can delete this admin because it obviously doesn't belong to any of the behavior inside of this main app and then also this import. And instead of now importing from main, of course, we want to import from dot because the views are in this directory itself. And the rest should be fine. And now go back to your main URL config. And instead of now having all of these paths here, let's just leave this one. But of course, it shouldn't lead to book list view. It should lead just to this URLs file, which we have inside of the main app. And we can use the include function for this. So just include the main.urls. And whenever we hit this route, it will automatically go into this URLs file and then start looking here. And now we have to import the include function, which is in django.urls. So that should work fine now. I can now open the command line and type in manage.py and run server. So if I hit my index route, as you can see, it shows me list view. And then let's go to book and let's type in a slug of book underscore name. And this will lead to the details view. And then if I append edit, that's the edit view, just like we specified in this URL config right here. So awesome, this issue is now resolved but I still see another issue. And this issue has to do with the common prefix we are sharing in all of the paths. As you can see, I'm typing in for every single path, book slash slug of slug, and this one repeats here and here again. And it's just not really a dry approach because we're repeating ourselves all of the time. And turns out that the include function can also be used to resolve this issue. So first of all, let's input it. And now we can write a new path, which leads to book slash slug, slug again. So that's what they all share. And instead of specifying any particular view now, we can use include and then pass it a list. And in here we can specify the paths which should be called after this path is hit. So now path is empty because obviously we want to cover the case that there isn't anything after this path because that will be the book detail view. So this should lead to views.book underscore detail. 
and then we have you can just copy this these ones and remove the common prefix Awesome, as you can see, we managed to clean up our code and remove the common prefix and just include it once. And we introduced a sort of hierarchy where we know that if we enter this path, there are four more options to go from there. So now we have another, let's call it, issue with this approach. And this is that basically we don't really need to include any of the add, delete or edit functions because HTTP by default has these headers where we can send different requests to our views. Obviously one type of request is just get, the other is post, then we have delete and put already. And these basically take care of what we want to do right here. And instead of doing like this, we can just make the path to book slug of slug and just call views.book or you can call it whatever you want. Or I'm going to call it actual book.detail. And we can get rid of basically all of this. And in our views file now, instead of having all of these different views, we can basically accomplish all of this in just this view. And this is by using the different request methods that are available to us. So first of all, if the request.method which the user wanted is get, then they should be returned. And of course, in a real world scenario, you now would have all of the code which would do this functionality, but that's just a tutorial right here, which is meant to show you the design pattern itself. And else, if that's not the case, we want to check if the request.method is equal to post. And if that's the case, we want to add a new book. Let's just space it out a bit. If the request of method is put, we want to update or edit a new book. And otherwise, let's check if it's delete. And if that's the case, we want to delete a book. And just like this, we encapsulated all of the behavior which belongs to a particular book into just one view. And this just makes it more clean to read and just understand what's going on because we don't need to use four views for basically just one behavior that we have going on and just, just cleans up our entire code. Let's now create a simple template for demonstrating another problem we have with this approach. So you can go into your templates directory and I'm just going to keep it very simple and create a file called index.html. And in here we have an a href, which is going to lead us to book. And then let's just choose a name of book underscore name. And then it's going to say, go to book details. And now we want to wire it up with one view. Let's say we just do it with this view still book list. So instead of listing the books, or well, I'm going to call it index actually, that would be more appropriate in this case. Change the name to index. And now we want to return a render with the request and then index.html. And just go back to your browser now and go to the path. And as you can see, I have go to book details link. And if I click it, I will be led to the details view. So what is the problem we have with this approach? And the problem is that if we at any point decide to change the path, we would need to go in any single file we have and change all of the address along with it. And we can resolve this issue by naming a path. So just specify the name of book detail. And inside of our template now, we can use the URL function. So like this, URL, and then it was called book underscore detail. And of course we specified a slug, which should be present in any single request. So we can just pass in the slug 
as let's say book underscore name. And if we now click on our link, you will see that we still get led to the same route. Only that if we, for example, wanted to change this route to book details, let's say, although it doesn't really make any sense. And if we were to go back and click on this link, we would still get redirected to the view we wanted. So that's one problem solved. And the last improvement we can make is using namespaces. And as you can see, I have the name of book underscore detail. And if I had like 10 more, I would obviously be repeating myself with this book prefix. So inside of our main URL config, we can now go in here and specify the namespace of book. And you will see that we get an error. And this is because Django S of Django 2 wants an app name specified. So if we go back to our main URL.py file, we can just go to the top and say app name equals book. And it will pass. And now we can change this name to just detail. And obviously now our link will break. No reverse match at blah, blah, blah. So now instead of doing it like this, we can use book, which is the namespace name, and then a colon, and then the actual path name, which is detail. And if we click on it again, you will see that it still works. So now we made some major improvements to our URLs file and you can really use them in any project to just improve your overall design. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my mailing list and to my channel. And I hope to see you inside of the next one where we are going to cover views.